Hi there, welcome to this lecture looking at the functionalist view on the nuclear family and this one that uh, focuses on the ideas of Talcott Parsons. So uh, today we're going to look at why the nuclear family is the best family type for society according to Parsons. We're going to uh, examine how functionalists are critical of other family types and we're going to uh, evaluate Parsons' functionalist view on the nuclear family. Uh, just a reminder, like the previous lecture, look out for that G symbol in a star. That means you need to add a concept to your glossary. OK, um, so let's get started. So firstly, Parsons agrees with functionalist Murdoch, who we looked at in the previous lecture, that children need a nuclear family. They both 100 percent believe that the nuclear family is the best family type. And in that yellow box, I'm just reminding you of Murdoch's key family functions. So there was the economic support or from two incomes. There was the emotional support um, to both young, the children and the pair adults. There was a socialising of children's, uh, children, giving them the balanced socialisation, teaching them norms and values. There was a reproduction function, so creating the workers of the future, and also the sexual function, um, which uh, meant that the husband and wife would, were more likely to stay together and maintain the family unit. So that's Murdoch's key ideas. Um, so on the left is Parsons. So he said, yep, yeah, children need a nuclear family. And he said uh, the main reason being is for the primary socialisation. So children are taught the norms and values of society in their family. So norms, they teach us um, how to behave. Values are things that we all find important, we're striving for and we share those values. Um, and through learning these within the family, we all become more committed to these rules. OK, we all share them, we absorb them, they're inside us, these norms and values. And Parsons argued that this was best delivered through two adults with both of the typical gender roles within the home. So again, Murdoch also argued that, so male breadwinner, female kind of housemaker, carer. Um, in terms of primary socialisation, um, functionalists would see the male as typically the more disciplinarian figure, so providing most of the discipline, whereas the female would probably provide much more of the care and the emotional support side. Um, so Parsons argued that, yep, you need two adults from I, both sexes, uh, in their typical gender roles. So the male role model can teach the boy how to be a man. The female can teach the girl how to be a woman. And they can also get that balance of, you know, disciplinarian and emotional support from both genders. So that's primary socialisation. Um, what's interesting about Parsons is that he really also emphasises that the family, the nuclear family, is just as important for the adults as well. And he called this the stabilisation of adult personalities. So um, there's that G in the star again. So please add stabilisation of adult personalities to your glossary along with a definition. So what Parsons means by this is that the family stabilises personalities, OK, and uh, provides a nice emotional relationship. So it stables emotional relationships. Now, he believed this could only be done through married couples um, as and they would provide warmth and emotional support to each other after a busy day of work. Um, and this would mean, because they could come home to a lovely, caring family environment, that they're less likely to suffer the stresses perhaps linked to the workplace. Um, because uh, they're supporting one another, they're less likely to argue. Um, so, you know, they're generally uh, that, that would stabilise their personality because they'd feel a bit happier. Um, and ultimately, this prevents things like divorce because, um, you know, they're providing emotional support. Um, and, you know, divorce would be bad because this would create instability. So the stabilisation of adult personalities keeps the family together, prevents divorce, which prevents social instability. Um, interestingly, though, Parsons believes this only works if there are typical gender roles. So the man is the breadwinner. He is the one working and the woman would be the caregiver. So she would be responsible for the care and the domestic duties in the house. Uh, so effectively, what he's looking for is a family where the man would work and perhaps get quite stressed out with work, maybe. And he'd come home and he'd get his emotional support from the wife. So he believes this only works in families where you've got typical gender roles. Um, which obviously isn't necessarily what happens anymore. So that's one of the problems with Parsons' ideas, because both men and women generally work. 
Um, so yeah, those are that's that Parsons' view of the nuclear family. Key for primary socialisation and the stabilisation of adult personalities. Lots of similarities there with Murdoch, okay? And they're both functionalists, so that makes sense. So here's your independent activity to go with this lecture. Um, I'd like you to make a list or a table uh, of why you think functionalists would argue the nuclear family is better for children and or the adult mem members within that family compared to other family types. Uh, and your ideas, they can link to you know, the functions that we've been talking about or other parts of society outside of the family. So maybe think about that organic analogy, the idea that uh, society works like a human body. All of the different institutions in society need to work effectively together for the whole of society to work. Just like in the human body, um, all of the organs need to work effectively. Um, if one organ starts to fail, the rest of the, the body starts to fail in society, the organic analogy, the idea would be that if one institution fails, like the family, then other parts of society would start to go wrong as well. Just a quick reminder of the organic analogy. Um, so yeah, down there you have got a nuclear family on the left. On the right I've given you four different family types. So your first challenge, I guess, is to identify what are those family types. Write them down in a table, I would say would be the best way to do it. And then next to each family type, I'd like you to say, well, why do you think functionalists would be critical of these family types? Um, you know, so for example, I'll, I'll do a really obvious one with you. Bottom right, I've got a picture there from Cinderella um, with her evil stepsisters. Um, so if she's living with her stepsisters, that's what's known as um, a reconstituted family or a blended family that's sometimes known. And as you can see in that image, the, one of the big problems of living in a step family is that there's loads and loads of conflict between siblings. So you could say functionalists would say step families are bad because there's loads of arguments and conflict um, and that's really bad for the emotional support function. So I've done one for you. If you could just do the other three, that would be great. But you need to work out what are those three different family types. So just to finish off, um, I'm going to uh, run through uh, what we think is wrong with Parsons' view of the nuclear family. So we can summarise his main ideas are that the primary socialisation can only be delivered well through two members of the opposite sex and that married couples in typical gender roles are the ones that can stabilise adult personalities. So what's wrong with these two arguments? And there's a few images there in the right that will give you a clue. So firstly, he ignores how effective other family types can be in socialising children. Um, so for example, in a lone parent family or LPF or an extended family. So remember, extended families are when you might have you have more than uh, two generations living together. So you might live with, I don't know, your mum and dad and your grandparents, for example. So in a lone parent family or an extended, a grandfather perhaps could help as a male role model if, if it's the male that's missing or a grandmother if it's a female that's missing. So just because uh, lone parent families haven't got maybe fathers doesn't mean that they won't have male role models. They could get that through another male member of the extended family. Um, and they also really do ignore that even within same sex couples, they can get a really high level of emotional support from couples that have the same gender. And just because they're of the same gender doesn't mean that, you know, they can't provide the different roles effectively. So you could get two women together. One could be a much more uh, authoritarian figure um, and the other one could be a much more of a sort of, if you like, ki kinder, gentler figure. So just because they're both female doesn't mean that they're both going to be the, the caring, loving, emotional support role model. You could just as easily in a same sex couple get two different roles. OK, so they can still get that kind of the discipline and the care, if you like. Um, and again, same with other family types. They can be just as effective as at socialising children. And and the other issue with this idea that the nuclear family can only socialise children is this problem of the dark side of the family that we mentioned last lesson, last lecture. So the dark side being the kind of the conflict, the arguments, and in the most extreme example, maybe the violence that takes place within a family. So being socialised within a nuclear family where there is lots of conflict can harm children. So you know, if, even if there's just lots of arguments so between the mum and dad, if they're constantly arguing and bickering, that's really not great for that child to be raised in that environment. 
Um, or, you know, if there's actual abuse within that family, a nuclear family, whether the child's being harmed or one of the adults is being harmed, that's really harmful. That's not going to effectively socialise a child. That's going to be what we could probably call abnormal socialisation if there's, they're being raised where violence is going on. Because they might end up growing up thinking, oh, violence is normal, which obviously it's not in society. So that's what the one of the problems with the idea that, you know, it's only nuclear families that can effectively socialise children. Um, the other point, the idea that, you know, married couples in typical gender roles are great because they stabilise adult personalities. Well, this really puts a lot of pressure on women to absorb the stress of the whole family. So remember, women, according to Parsons, they're the best caregivers, OK, um, uh, for the emotional support. So they're supporting the children. Um, but then they'll also be kind of expected to support um, the, the father figure, the, 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 the husband who goes out to work. They then need to absorb all his stress of the workplace. And he might come home. He might be really angry about work. Um, could start an argument, could be really grumpy. So that can be really stressful for a woman to kind of manage that as well as everything else in the family. Um, but obviously there's also that dark side of the family again, where maybe letting out the stress of the work can turn to violence. So women might end up absorbing physical anger as well, which is obviously illegal and very harmful. Um, and then this is an argument from the feminists. They would say it's really unfair that women have to take on what they call unpaid domestic labour, okay, especially as many women also work as well. So that's a problem with the functionalist view of gender roles generally, um, because they believe that women typically should take up real in charge of the domestic sphere, so the housework, the children, the care. They really don't take into account how, how much work that is, and it's completely unpaid, it's unrewarded. Women are generally expected to get on with those jobs because it's associated with their gender, and there isn't that pressure on men to maintain their house in the same way. And this is an even bigger problem in modern society because you know women tend to be more responsible for housework still, and yet they have their own careers and jobs to manage. So it's kind of like a double whammy, what we call a double burden. Um, Finally, I just want to make a little point about cohabiting couples. So cohabiting couples are ones that are not married, um, but live together and in this case in a family would have children. Now Parsons and Murdoch said it was only married couples that could, you know, really, really kind of support one another. But actually there's an argument that a cohabiting couple might be more happy and supportive than a married couple uh, because they're staying together because they want to, not just because they're married. And, you know, there are a number of married couples who perhaps stay together uh, just because they've gone through a marriage and they feel that they're obligated to stay with someone because they're married. Whereas you could argue that maybe a cohabiting couple that isn't married, they've actually there together because they've chosen to and they're much happier together. So they've made that choice. Um, although I, I would uh, also point out that um, couples who cohabit are slightly more likely to separate than couples who are married. So there's just that little evaluation of that evaluation point there. Thanks so much for listening. Um, have a go at that independent activity and I'll be looking forward to hearing some of your ideas. Bye.